Now we are going to take a little shift. Now we are going, next one please. We are going to talk about Yunani medicine in Pakistan. I tell you, when I started reading about the history, I, was, I got so absorbed in it. I didn't want to study anything but go into the history of it. So the more I read, the more I, uh, my eyes were opened and widened. Oh my God, they knew so much. And I wanted to be a historian now. It's too late. But nevertheless, now we are going to talk about Yunani medicine in Pakistan. Now, this is the recent history. You can see the, uh, the slide, uh, the slide only, the, the, the stamp on my left side, it is Hakim Hassan Karchi. Karchi has uh, uh, played a very important role in, in, the, in the Yunani medicine. They have got uh, beautiful Karchi gardens, uh, which is shown below, and the manufacturing Yunani uh, and formulation and herbal medicines. Then followed by that is uh, Hakim Abdul Rahim Ashraf, Ashraf Laboratories, and uh, which moved to Faisalabad. And then the, uh, then the main player emerged, and that is Hakim Muhammad Said. Modest beginnings of, although he was, he came from India in the year 1947, that is after partition. And uh, when he came to Pakistan, he opted because one brother stayed in India and is doing very well. He has got uh, Hamdard laboratories there and uh, Hamdard uh, India is there and, and uh, it has a whole city of Hamdard there. So uh, Hakim Muhammad Said uh, with a modest beginning of rupees 11, which is peanuts, even has no value now, had rented a furniture in 1947. He came empty handed and he worked so hard. He established Hamdard Laboratories, Pakistan, Karachi in the year of 1948, which then was turned into, uh, into an Islamic irrevocable trust, which is called as Waqf. So whatever earnings were there, it was a trust and in 1953 and then he came and established then he further established Hamdard Foundation so it's a true Hamdard Laboratories, Hamdard Foundation now there's going to be one more thing which is referred to as I'll tell you later so the first thing which he established were the Matabs Matabs are the Yunani clinics and, uh, and it, is, it is in Karachi uh, very much functional. It was established in 1948 and there uh, 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 he pledged to serve Pakistan to the best of his abilities and that was beautiful. He actually served Pakistan to the best of his abilities till he gave his blood for this country. So this is amazing. Then the an, another matab which was set by him was uh, Hamdad uh, Markaz Lahore because during the early, early days he used to go to Lahore and practice there uh, and perform the checkups uh, of the people, giving them the Yunani medical treatments. However, the Hamdad Conference Center, it's a huge center inaugurated in, in the in a part of the Hamdad Markaz. It was inaugurated in 1998. Next one, please. Now, this is something very interesting. Uh, in January 2023, all these matabs uh, are there, they are there functioning. But the Pakistan's first digital Hamdat matab, it's in, uh, in Karachi and it's a computerized, the records are computerized, the diagnosis uh, and the prescriptions and their health follow ups are there, facilities are available. Uh, for the patients, online upon, uh, appointments, ordering medicines and all not, uh, what not, it is, it is much more digitalized. Now, once you have matters, they have, next one please, there has to be a background for the, for the supply, there has, there has to be a continuous supply of uh, Yunani medication. So, in order to prepare the medication, uh, there has to be manufacturing units. There are many manufacturing units, but few of them mm, are listed here. One of them is Hamdad Laboratories. And Professor Liu, you are very much familiar uh, with the uh, with the Herbion Naturals and with the Medics Laboratories, and there are many others. Uh, but uh, these are the uh, mm, 
uh, but uh, Hamdard natural stands out because of its export of its uh, uh, medication uh, to the various parts of the of the world. The next one, please. Yes, the, in order to have the manufacturing units, they need a continuous supply of the plants, and Pakistan is blessed with the, uh, with the biodiversity right from top to the salt, uh, from the from north to the south, and so it's got a, such a beautiful topography that it has got the plant species, diverse plant species, medicinal plants, and then the um, the plants with the uh, with the medicinal values, and they are traded locally and internationally. About 300 plants, but we also acquire plants. We also get smuggled plants uh, from our borders because the borders are very perforated for it. Now the, there are medicinal plants research institutes uh, uh, which developed in Pakistan and the one which stands out is the International Center for Chemical and Biological Sciences, um, uh, HEJ Research Institute of Chemistry and uh, everybody knows uh, that very well. However, we do have Dr. Hafiz Muhammad Elias Institute of Pharmacology in Han. And that university and uh, and the lady uh, who's sitting next on my left is the is the director of that of that uh, research institute. Next one, please. It's a Yunani medicine education in Pakistan. Next one, please. The the, the contribution of Hamdard in particular, it's a one man show basically, and uh, it's uh, Hakim Muhammad Said. It is in the field of the Unani Medicine Pakistan. Hamdat Tibbi College uh, was established. Uh, was established with free education. Remember, it was a diploma core, a diploma, um, a diploma holders, and it was an initiation. And then he had a mission: the mission to provide knowledge and the mission to develop Eastern medicine. And in order to do that, he wanted to bring high quality health educational training, which could meet the challenges of the 21st century. The opportunities for advanced studies and research, he was very much uh, into research. Awareness among the, but why all this has to be done? Because he wanted to serve the people, the society, and that's what the name says Hamdard. Hamdard in English means sympathy and caring for the people. So next one please. And the objective was to plan and execute research programs as I said earlier with responsibility and honestly and sincerely and in the best interest of the patient to develop a team of health professionals for promoting and solving health problems in the community. And I, uh, I can tell you that this idea has been very successful in the Hamdard University. As we can see, we have got very professional faculty members in our Faculty of Eastern Medicine. They are excellent and they are very honest as far as their uh, clinical programs are concerned. And uh, they, they, they are very actively involved in serving the nation. Next one, please. So Madinatul Hikma, which is referred to as the city of education, science and culture, where we are sitting today, was actually founded by uh, Hakim Said in the year 1991. Whereas if you can see at the bottom, Faculty of Eastern Medicine was established as Hamdard Al-Majid College of Eastern Medicine in 1995. Now this is the proper education system which we'll talk about. So this is just to give an overview that uh, after the sad demise of uh, Hakim uh, Muhammad Said, his daughter, Madam Saadia Rashid, the chancellor of this university to date, played a very important role and carried the candle of education and is a very dynamic and very hardworking lady. And she attends all the conferences and all the Ambro meetings as well. And one man who was with Hakim Said all the time, he came to Pakistan to get married and then he stayed here. Professor, and then that is Professor Hakim Abdul Hanan. He never left. He came from India and he stayed here. And since then, 
he's affiliated with the uh, with the eastern medicine or unani medicine and his contributions are are uh, unimaginable and now at the moment he is uh, the director of clinical studies in the hamdard laboratories waqf pakistan and he has been my teacher of unani medicine whatever little bit of unani medicine right or wrong i don't take the blame he is to be blamed that's what he taught me and now <laughs> and then then now at the moment we have professor dr Sh uh, shabibul hasan he is our young uh, very dynamic vice chancellor and uh, very enthusiastic and has really transformed the university uh, and has taken it to new heights he is uh, from the management department he is not a scientist but uh, honestly he knows quite a lot next one please so the academic program which is offered by the faculty of eastern medicine we have got undergrad program which is a bachelor of eastern medicine surgery it is a five years program with one year of uh, uh, house job uh, which started in 1995 and then uh, this is a new baby which is a uh, program undergrad program is a uh, bs in human nutrition and dietetics it is a four years program and it was established in 2020 mm. Now we have a postgraduate program in the Eastern Medicine that is MPhil and PhD. Next one, please. This is the organogram which shows uh, various uh, uh, depart uh, departments uh, and uh, ranging from principles to Eastern Medicine, then the basic medical and clinical sciences, allied sciences in surgery and medicine and the community medicine and behavioral sciences so at the moment we have got the faculty members who hold the phd's and fails and we in addition to that this is something very interesting we have introduced the uh, the induction of the um, uh, teaching and research uh, assistants the younger generation who are actually uh, playing a very important role and most of them are working for their higher degrees as well and also helping uh, the teaching uh, in, in teaching particularly in the laboratory <laughs> teaching next one please. Uh, next one shows the total number of bms uh, graduates uh, the program started in 1995 dr noman are you here yeah dr noman played a very important role in in making this uh, histogram for us so cutting long story short so far we have produced uh, about 543 bms graduates and unfortunately or fortunately 74% of them are females so this is actually the entire year by year record so it started in 1995 next one please post graduate programs uh, we have in eastern medicine uh, or it is also called bachelor of unani medicine and uh, then we have got a phd in the uh, 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 phds and these are the people who can qualify to get admission into the mphil phd programs next one please so <clears throat> total number of mphils produced so far um, is 39 and phd is 23 and it is increasing i tell you one thing there are so many people increasing and uh, uh, dr chiraz is the main person who is actually looking after our post graduate program now the uh, the the first phd was uh, professor dr uh, next one please the first phd degree holder of bms uh, of uh, unani medicine was hakim abdul hanan sahab followed by um, followed by hakim afzal ahmed they both of them are actively practicing hakims then we have got professor shahab who is uh, who is involved in teaching and in uh, in uh, in conducting um, his clinic as well and then the first mphil is tabiba halima nazar and uh, she is also very active and a member of of one of our regulatory bodies which is national council of tech now eastern medicine institutions in pakistan next one please you can see that this hamdard university faculty of eastern medicine is the master of all the 
programs which are being followed in in in, in the entire country so so we have got private sector universities and and e e each one of uh, them has got uh, at least one uh, faculty member from hamdad university as we are the pioneering institutions and there are public sector universities and and universities are still coming up coming up to the pharmacopia the first pharmacopia was published by national council for tip single herbs about 900 pharmacopia is very important here and the hamdad pharmacopia of eastern medicine have compound formulation it was published by hamdad foundation in 67 in urdu and english it was revised in in urdu in uh, and recently as well and hakim abdul hanan played a pivotal role at the moment uh, it is in the preparation of it you know, they are preparing the pharmacopoeia in english inshallah it will be done within 2 years under the leadership of hakim abdul hanan there are monographs about 300 plants of pakistan and then we will give you one gift of this pharmacopoeia professor now there are single plant uh, morphology habitat temperament indications and toxic properties are also included in it next one please and we have various uh, associations and uh, one is the pakistan association for eastern medicine and most recently which is referred to as pain and most recently we had a excellent uh, program in which uh, 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 in which hakim said was actually uh, appreciated <coughs> everybody appreciated his work and contributions and this for uh, this actually prov provides a great platform for the hakims all over the country to come and discuss the progress which they have made not only the hakims but the uh, the, the scientists and our faculty members and our uh, graduate students and post graduate students as well they all participate sharing their knowledge and exchange of ideas are there and this is for the first time that they had uh, presented uh, the the final year students presented their research projects under the guidance of the corresponding faculty members and they were about 50 of them and each one of them was 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 very very good and 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 the level of the lectures presented uh, has been appreciated by the by the you know by the various guests not everything has to be legal so the alternative medicine in pakistan has uh, was legalized uh, under the act of the unani ayurvedic and homeopathic practitioners act in the year 1965 1965 is a very important year when you will you'll see later this unani and ayurvedic they have a common council but we have got another uh, system of medicine that is homeopathic it has got a different council <coughs> next one please we have got the regulatory bodies and the regulatory bodies are national council for tib it is important uh, to regulate the education registration monitoring of the education system and it had a, we had a recent visit a recent visit in uh, 2022 then there is a higher education commission um of pakistan it is stationed in islamabad approved the revised curriculum of eastern medicine uh, in the year uh, 2004 and 15 and as i said earlier it is under the uh, final revision again now the institution performance evaluation committee also uh, visited us and uh, then there was a charter evaluation and investigational committee recent visit in uh, january uh, 2023 and they you know um, all they, they made a very special comment for the faculty of eastern medicine they said they are they're doing very well as far as the research is concerned but they need to work harder but nevertheless they appreciated the efforts of the faculty of eastern medicine then we have a drug regulatory authorities of pakistan the drab which is responsible for the manufacturing monitoring and control and uh, professor you, you you can get the information about it uh, from the hamdard laboratories as well if you want next one please then we have sind <coughs> health care commission quality care for all now this is something very important because without the permission without the permission of uh, 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 without their permission we cannot practice anything this is something very important sind health care commission jo hai uh, it is a provincial uh, setup which regulates us next now, now this one shows the unani medicine 
Research Laboratory, which was established in 2021. And the structure uh, shows uh, uh, Dr. Sabra Nafi, who is among the audience, and she is heading this uh, uh, heading this laboratory. Could you, could you please wave to them? That Dr. Sabra Nafi has got her PhD from, uh, in uh, in biochemistry from ICCBS, uh, from Professor under the supervision of Professor uh, late uh, Dr. Zafar Zaidi Saha. And then we have got a whole uh, group, which is a research associate coordinators and research assistants. The next one shows the health network of Hamdard, which is amazing. And, uh, and uh, here, next one, please, shows the foundation stone, which was laid down by Hakim Muhammad Said in 1998, who was then the chancellor of this university. Next one, please. Mm, and then Shifal Mulk Hospital was inaugurated in the April uh, uh, 2004. This is the first Eastern Medicine Hospital in Pakistan. And we are so proud of it. And it is playing a very important role in giving our, our, our Tabibs, uh, uh, the younger generation, uh, a training program. It is like a house job, which they do it here. It is on the rotation because you have got other matabs as well. Next one, please. This is Jafal Mood Memorial Hospital. You can see, I think you have uh, uh, visited it last time. It is 150 bed hospitals. It is 24 hours free. And it serves 37 villages surrounding Hamdard, uh, Hamdard University in the vicinity of Ban Murad. And uh, mm, it is all free. Yeah, we have got uh, ambulance services here, which is available. And the hijama and cupping therapy is conducted by our faculty members. Next one is, is the glimpses of the hospital. You can see uh, Professor Hakim Abdul Hannan, and you can see the way, the place where the drugs are stored. Of course, it is not this, of the same magnitude as Guanam Hospital, in uh, which uh, which I visited um, in Beijing. It's a it's a 13-story building, so we have got just one ground floor, but uh, it has got small laboratories as well. Next one, please. Uh, so Hamdard has got a free mobile dispensaries. Now this concept was started with just one mobile, dis one mobile dispensary to the remote area in in the year 1963, and now the Hamdard Foundation has equipped it with 20 uh, vehicles which have got uh, uh, all the necessary items which needs to be there for the ambulance. And uh, then the, there is uh, the contributions of, uh, of, of the, uh, it has been spread to the flood affected areas in the Tharpaka Sindh in the recent floods. Hamdat um, uh, Foundation and Hamdat um, Clinics played a very important role, particularly reaching to the areas where the allopathic doctors, next one please reaching to the areas where the allopathic doctors and the others refused to go, but our people were there uh, distributing the food and the medicine and the blankets and other things. And uh, this is the uh, next one, please. Shows a uh, free mobile dispensary, um, medical camps and the awareness programs. Next one, please. The network is so good that it is spread all over the in Pakistan uh, and you can see the regions and the units here and they, are they have so far treating more than 5,000, 500,000 poor and needy patients every year in, it's amazing, uh, in, in 11 major cities of uh, 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 major cities. Now comes, this is the services which Hamdat um, provides. Now, the breakthrough came by the next one, memorable visit to China in 1963. It was the first Pakistani delegation led by Hakim Said to visit China. He was inspired by the Chinese way of uh, treatment, and inspired by the way they work. And he, upon his return, he, read, he wrote a book. And it covers the history. Next one, please. It covers the history of medicine and focuses mainly on the development since the Chinese Revolution in 1940, um, in, in 1949. Next one, please. Foreign visitors, there, there, have, uh, there has been many, many foreign visitors 
uh, earlier during the time of uh, uh, Hakim Saab and even Nobel laureates used to used to visit. Uh, but I'm going to talk about only the recent visits of the members which were from UAE and they visited and they are planning uh, to hold collaboration particularly in the field of, uh, of Yunani medicine and they want uh, the Yunani medicine practitioners for Pakistan to come and uh, come and start practicing there in UAE. Uh, then uh, we have the visitors. Uh, next one, please. We have visitors from Columbia University, USA, and um, and they also wanted to have uh, collaboration with us. But one thing that needs to be mentioned that Dr. Sayyid Tasneem uh, Tasneem Raza. Uh, wrote uh, his thesis on MS thesis on the contributions of Hakim Muhammad Said. He was so inspired by his uh, by his uh, work and contribution in the uh, Yunani medicine while he was in Columbia University. He is there and he's coming again um, maybe next month. This was a gold medal which was received uh, by Madam Sadia Rashid and. Uh, uh, and by Hakim Annan for their contribution in the field of Yunani medicine. Uh, it was, uh, I think, in 2022. Uh, next one, please. Uh, these are the international uh, level participations. I cannot go into it. It's too much. Next one, please. Then we had, again, in, uh, many, many participations. There were, set. next one, please. Seminars, workshops, conferences, and symposia. Next one, please. This is Hunan University of Chinese Medicine delegation which came in 2013. You can see uh, that uh, we, we signed the MOU with them and uh, uh, Professor Dr. Hakim Abdul Hanan is driving them and taking them around to the fields of uh, Hamdard, uh, Hamdard fields. Next one, please. Most recently, we had a memorandum of understanding uh, which when the, and, the, and the man behind uh, having this MOU is none other than uh, Professor Liu. So you can see Madam Sadia Rashid signing MOU uh, with, the, uh, 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 with the Hunan University. And the next one, you can see the signing of, uh, of the Vice Chancellor uh, with, the, with the University of Shehizi University. Here is the um, uh, delegation again, which signed uh, the MOU. Next one, please. Uh, signed the MOU uh, between the Ningo University. This is uh, during the last visit when, uh, when you can see our Vice Chancellor and the Chancellor there, uh, Professor Liu, and then uh, two lovely delegates from, uh, from China, and myself and Dr. Summer there. The next one, please, is that uh, Hakim Said made a big point that one has to be uh, connected with the WHO. He actually, the person who convinced WHO to recognize the importance <coughs> of the Yunani medicine. And it is a great pride for us that Hamdad, Hamdad Foundation is the observer member of, uh, of this organization, which is Eastern Mediterranean Regional uh, Office uh, organization based in Cairo, there are 22 members, and Pakistan, of course, is a member of that. But in addition to that, Hamdat Foundation is a is observer member, and I also have the privilege of attending um, uh, attending the last three four um, conferences, uh, whether online, offline, uh, of this, along with Madam Sadia and uh, and the Professor Hakim Abdul Hanan. The next one is the National Policy and Traditional Medicine Regulation of Herbal Medicine and published in uh, 2005. And then there was the Atlas, which was also published. So Yunani Medicine of System, which was then realized by the WHO, as you can see that, the, uh, that uh, there is no doubt about it, uh, that uh, most recently um, um, a big forum uh, was conducted in India uh, and uh, which addressed the traditional system of medicine and it was it was actually uh, uh, made a very important uh, recommendation uh, that uh, all the countries of the world wherever there is a traditional medicine their respective ministry of health should include it as a primary healthcare system. Unfortunately, I could not participate in that uh, because of the restrictions of the visa. However, I had fully covered 
uh, invitation from India. So this is something very sad. Next one, please. Now, this is something very important and I want you to pay a little attention. We have each come into this world for a specific reason to live, love and serve Allah through services of his creatures. This is what the institution of Hamdad reflects dignity, knowledge, faith, sincerity, honesty and sprite of services. Hamdad signifying one who has sympathy, has chosen to serve through activities for the promotion of good health. Thank you.